Hello, this is Nathan Webb, and this is a tutorial on how to set up a root and hip control on a 3D character in Maya. This assumes you already have IK set up on the legs and some form of torso control. I'm using the forward kinematic torso control method. You could also use spline IK to do the torso control. Let's take a look at this character here. We have inverse kinematics on his leg here, so his leg will stay put when we move his torso. And we also have a forward kinematic set up for his torso, just using an orient constraint on the joints. We can show our joints here. But currently, if I move the joints up and down, he does bend down, but I want to set up the hip control so I can wiggle his hips independently of his root. I even don't have his hip connected to his upper torso. That's fine. You could parent your hip to your lower spine joint if you want. Whoops! <laughs> but I'm not going to do that for this character. To get started I'm going to use a controller for the hip so I can wiggle it back and forth and keep his torso in place. I'm just going to use a NURB circle, create NURB's primitive circle, just draw it on the ground here, move it on up to where his hip is. I'll take out the X and Z translation and I'm going to snap it. I'll hold down the V button as in Victor and snap it to his hip and I'm going to scale it down so it kind of fits his hip. I'm going to call that hip control. We're going to freeze the transformations of the hip control. Once you have it set to the size you want, go to Modify, Freeze Transformations. Now our translation is 0 and our scale is 1. We're going to do three main steps to get our hip control to work. We're going to orient constrain the hip joint to the hip controller. We're going to point constrain the hip joint to the lowest spine joint, and then point constrain the hip controller group to the lowest spine joint. It's good practice to make groups for all your controllers if you're going to have to constrain the controller because we're going to also animate this controller and you don't want to have conflicting constraints and animations on the same object. So I'm going to take the hip controller and hit control G to make a group out of it and call it hip control group and I'll take that group's pivot and move it back to the spine. So I'm going to hit the W button and then hold down D to move the pivot point and then hold down D again and V as in Victor and snap that pivot point of the group to the hip joint. Now my first step is to orient constrain the hip joint to the hip controller so you always pick the constraining object first and then the hip Let's find the hip here. There we go. Go to Constrain Orient. Whoops! We forgot to turn on Maintain Offset. So we go to Orient and hit Maintain Offset and hit Apply. There we go. So now when I rotate the hip controller, the hip moves. Now I notice I already had a point constraint on the hip. That's because I already had this rigged up before I loaded it up. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and show you how to make it again. So I'm going to ha have the second step here. I'm going to point constrain the hip joint to the lowest spine joint. So I'll pick the lowest spine joint and then I'll hit the minus key to make my control widget smaller and then select the hip, go to constrain point, let's make sure we hit maintain offset, and hit apply. Now we can take a look to see what we have. If I move the root controller or his lower spine controller, his hip moves back and forth, but when I rotate 
the root controller, his hip doesn't rotate. We want to keep our pelvic region static when we rotate our, our upper body, and then we can independently rotate this. The final thing we need to do is to get the hip controller to follow the low spine joint because when I move my global controller or my hip my root controller the hip controller doesn't follow along with it we don't want to leave controllers behind so I'm gonna take my lowest spine joint which is spine 1 and then I'll control select the hip control group and go to constrain and point. Now when I move my root control, my hip control follows it. I can still independently wiggle my hips around. And let's see what happens when I rotate it. When I rotate it, my hip group doesn't move at all. So that is how we can set up a simple setup to animate your character's hips independently of the root controller. Thank you for watching.